Hello guys, it's me. You will only see the bottom half of my body so you can see my work surface on my hands. Basically, this is the tutorial for my smoke bomb. And, um, yeah, so what you'll need is a saucepan, so like a normal saucepan, um, some cotton wool, but I just used a bandage because that's usually all you need is like the material type stuff. Or you can use, if you've got a nail pad or cotton buds and cut the ends of the cotton buds, anything like that. Um, a tube, um, you can even use a toilet roll tube or you can use one of the sweetie tubes that you get so as it's coming up to near Christmas and things like that these will be quite quite common um, some scales, um, some scissors um, you'll need a fuse, like a fireworks fuse um, because I'm cheap and I couldn't be bothered to go out to the craft shop and get some fuses I've just been using um, like sparklers, so it's cut sparklers, um, so to make them like sort of shortish, and then you can use that as your fuse. That works just as well. Well, those those sparklers are a bit shit. And you'll want your potassium nitrate, which is um, KNO3, um, nitrogen and potassium oxide. So it's 13% nitrogen and 46% potassium oxide, um, and that is. Um, this basically comes, um, you can get potassium nitrate from sort of any chemical shop or hobby shop um, like that will do like sort of sciencey stuff um, and also in garden centres because potassium nitrate although um, it's used as an explosive in what we're doing today um, it's actually miracle grow um, so you can get it in your garden centre, Wyvel, B&Q, Homebase, anything like that, Paradise Park I've listed some of my local ones, but um, any local garden centre will sell it, but they'll sell it as something called saltpeter. So if you ask them saltpeter, then you'll be getting this. And this effectively is miracle Grow without all the crap inside it. Um, so that's perfectly, it's, um, so the smoke that you're going to make with this is perfectly harmless. It's not toxic at all. Um, although when you heat it, you have to be careful because obviously there's a risk of combustion. Also, whenever you're dealing with um, chemicals, always keep your labels on. For whatever reason, if you take sick because you stupidly swallowed it, got it in your eyes, got it in your bum, got it in your ear, whatever, um, you can give this to the medical professionals and they will obviously know what to do because all the correct information will be on the pack. Um, your scales is what you're going to use to weigh out your chemicals. Um, and also, I nearly forgot, um, something else that we'll need is, which I can't find because... Oh, here it is. It's sugar. You'll need your sugar. So this is just normal caster sugar, plain granulated sugar. Um, basics range, nothing expensive. Costs you about 60p. Um, and that is about it. So the ingredients is um, the the base key ingredients is potassium nitrate and sugar. So uh, what you would want to do is you would want to, I'm going to be making a big massive batch today but I'm going to show you what you do individually if you just want to make a smaller batch. So obviously you'll get your scales onto zero and you want to be um, just normal ordinary cooking scales and you just want to make sure that they're sort of working perfectly fine because the um, the ingredients really does matter and that will that will determine how good your smoke bomb actually is. Um, so what we're going to do first is first we'll measure out the sugar. You can just get a normal tray, um, a normal tray of sort of a cooking like hot food takeaway tray. Um, and we just want to measure out 40 grams, it's a bit too much. I'm going to measure out 40 grams of sugar. So the ratio that you want to be using is, <clears throat> the ratio you want to be using is 2 to 3. So if you don't have scales, you can quite easily just take two, two sort of heat spoonfuls of sugar and that will suffice and that will be the equivalent to 40 grams if you don't have scales or you're not very good with measuring. Right, so now we've got our 40 grams of sugar. We just want to make that sort of even in the pot and measure it again. We want to pour it into our cooking tray. 
in our takeaway dish, sorry. We want to fold that up and we want to get out our potassium nitrate <coughs> and what we want to do with this is we want to measure out 60 grams of potassium nitrate so the ratio is always 2 to 3 again if you cannot, if you don't have scales or you're not very good with measuring you just want <coughs> 3 heaped te tablespoons sorry, of potassium nitrate and again we're measuring out 60 grams if you want to be precise And then in total that should equal to 100 grams because that's what you're doing today, that you're doing a 100 gram smoke bomb. So you want to pour that in there and that, there we go, should be 100 grams. I'm a little bit over but you know it just means we're going to have a bit more of an explosion. <laughs> so, oh, put my camera back, there we go. So now you've got that, what you want to do with this is you want to just give it a little quick mix if you want to make a coloured smoke bomb you want to get organic powdered dye, I hear orange works the best um, and you would just mix it into this mixture here and then um, you would and then you just cook it um, if you're not very comfortable with cooking explosives or if you're doing this at home and your parents catch you doing it and they're not too happy then what you want to do is you can do a non-cooked version and instead of using your caster sugar, just use icing sugar with potassium nitrate. Same thing what you've done here, mix it all together and you don't need to cook that. You can just put it straight into your tube and then you can just light the fuse and it will, the, um, the icing sugar will light with the potassium nitrate and again will make smoke. So you can do it either way. So there's the cooked version and the non-cooked version. I like doing the cooked version. Um, <clears throat> the cooked version is more dangerous but um, obviously I like my risks. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply put this in our takeaway dish and <clears throat> because I want to do more than one smoke bomb I am going to measure up another lot because I would like to I'm going to do a big massive batch normally <clears throat> you just that would be your that would be your um, your ingredients that's you done you put that in your pan and then you mix it up but I'll, I'll show you the cook I'll show you the cook as well <clears throat> later on in this video. I've got still some ingredients left over, that's probably enough for another smoke bomb. I'm going to save that for later. Again, remembering to leave your labels on. Put these to the side. Right, here's some I've made earlier. <laughs> Very cliche. And I've got my tubes here as well. So here's some I've made earlier, as I said, and just it's very important to label up what you've actually got in your tubs. Um, obviously, if anyone comes across them, they know what's inside it. And also, it's really important that you do not swallow this stuff, obviously, because if you've got younger siblings, and make sure they're out of the way when you're doing this, or you've got sort of adequate supervision. So I've got five pots here. Um, four pots, sorry. This is enough to make five smoke bombs um, because I've put mixed two up in together. Um, so what I'm going to do now is to show you. I'm just going to um, put all of the ingredients I've got here into one, and I'm going to be making one massive cook. Now, obviously, you've got to be very, very careful when you put this on your fire purely because you are now dealing with a live um, you are now dealing with a live uh, I wouldn't say explosive but something that's very very flammable and once it gets too hot it will combust so it will go bang um, normally I would put baking powder um, in my mix but obviously because today I don't have any baking powder and my mum's not coming back from the shop until later I will not be using baking powder. So, um, right, we're just going to get the. Uh, I've got my laptop over here, so I'm just going to put it on the side. Bear with me one minute. So, we're going to cook on the hob. 
So what you want to do is you want to pour your mixture into your tray, um, frying pan, sorry, like so. So you've got your mixture in the frying pan. It's very important that you have it on a very low heat, as I said earlier, because you are now dealing with a very, very explosive substance which can combust and it will effectively take out the kitchen. So, no, I'm joking, it won't, but it will cause a very large fire. Um, so what we want to do, to start it off, we just want to have it on one, just a normal cooker, have it on gas mark one, on the top hob. And while that's heating up, I'm just going to seal off some of the lids to my <clears throat> to my tubes. So this one's I've already done. Most of them got a bottom already, but if you just want to put some tape over it, and that stops them, the mixture from coming out the bottom. This mixture is very, very hot and it will stick to your skin. So do not touch it when it's, uh, when it's just come out the frying pan because it will burn you and it will hurt like fuck and it will take off your skin so do not touch it, whatever you do so make sure you just seal your uh, Seal your tube so it's nice and sealed, there's no uh, gaps around the edges so the mixture cannot leak out. It's very important once you start getting your mixture hot to keep it moving so it doesn't burn and also so it doesn't uh, combust. Because once it combusts, you've got a very big problem. Because of the volume of my tubes, I may make less smoke bombs, but they'll, they'll be bigger. So. Once you've done your mixture, which I'll show you at the end, you would want to, um, once you've done your mixture, you just want to let it cool. It'll take about two hours to cool. Um, to speed mine up, I put mine in the fridge for a little bit and then I take it out to get to room temperature <clears throat> as to not to ruin the mix inside, obviously if it gets wet. Because this is actually soluble in water, so this will dissolve. Because obviously, Miracle Grow, when you put it in your um, when you put it in your watering can, you uh, it it melts, and same with sugar. If you put sugar in water, it dissolves. So this will get very sticky, and it will dry rock solid in your frying pan. But not to worry, you haven't spoiled your mum's best frying pan. I actually buy my own cook stuff for this, but. Um, it will just dissolve in water, so if you just give it a quick quick wash with uh, some soapy water then it will, it will come off as normal and we'll just wipe that away otherwise we'll start to get some sparks right, that's starting to get warm now, so what we want to do is we'll put it on free just to quick it, speed it up a little bit <clears throat> and so if you keep mixing it what you'll find is it will start to get a little clumpy as it gets hot and that's the sugar caramelising um, with the potassium nitrate but it's just the sugar that's going to make it thick into a soft that learns to like a solid mixture and eventually this, will, this won't be white it will be brown and you'll get like a peanut butter type substance purely because I want to make a large one that's a little bit a little bit longer. I'm just going to make an extra tube. There we go.
and you'll start to smell it as well. It's not a nasty smell, but you can smell it. It's a, uh, if you imagine like quite a strong like golden syrup smell. I was originally going to make loads of little ones, but I'm just going to make one large one. Um, and as I said, with your um, <clears throat> with your sorry, with your um, baking soda, you'd normally put your baking soda in, and that slows down combustion when you light it. So when the smoke bomb actually goes off, the baking powder will slow down the explosion and make less flame and more smoke. As I said, the smoke is totally safe and organic. It's not going to harm you if you breathe it in. I wouldn't recommend you stand in the middle of it, but yeah, it won't, you know, you're not going to be coughing and choking all over the place. Right, here we go. Right, so. So as you can start to see, I don't know if you can see that there, but you're starting to get little clumps of like snowdrops. So as you can see, we're starting to get little brown bits. So again, it's quite a pungent smell. And you'll smell off of it, but um, it's nothing. It's nothing to worry about. It's not toxic or anything. You're not going to get hurt breathing it in. So you just want to be making sure you mix it everywhere and little circle motions to make sure you get everything keep it moving because the last thing you want to do is burn your burn your mix see as you st once it stops it will start to harden, so it's important that I keep it going. I can not stop really, but it's alright. I can rectify it. Like I said, if you have it on a quick heat, and because I'm doing like a big batch, it takes longer to cook. Normally your cooking time will be about two and a half minutes. So I don't know if you can see, but we're coming together now. So you're getting that brownish sort of look so you want to have it looking like peanut butter what you want to do is once this gets hot it will get it will melt it quicker so you can start pressing it down so just when you're stirring it just sort of pressing it in like that just pressing it in into the saucepan into the heat There we go. When you start to get it bubbling in the middle, just take it off the heat and then just put it back on the heat again. But you do not want it to have it like boiling, boiling, boiling. And as you can see, that's what you want it to be the end product, like that. You just got to be careful as to not to burn it. Because it can be easily done. you got your mixture 
nicely cooked, which we have. That's your end product. That's what you should have. And then we want to just scoop that in. There we go. Right. So yeah. So now you have your your solid mix. This will start to get hard. So it's very important, like cement, that you get it, get it in quick. So what we're going to do now. What you want to do is you just want to, just want to scrape the top, scrape the excess off. Then you want to get a pen, just simply get a pen and stick it in the middle, like that. Just so you leave like a little hole in it. That's where your fuse is going to go, because eventually that will be rock solid and you won't be able to, you won't be able to, um, you won't be able to move it. So you do it while it's still wet. So you'll clean your base just so it doesn't come out. So the tape works really well as a base. Final touch, you want to wait for this to cool. See that's going rock solid. These are these will go rock solid, so you won't be able to squeeze them, won't be able to break them. Same with this one quite soft at the moment but that will eventually go rock solid and then you want to get your uh, get your fuse like so you get your uh, cotton wool in my case a pad a bandage pad you roll it up like that, just into like a little roll. Put it on the end of your fuse, like so. Put it in Z hole. Push it down. And that is your smoke bomb. You'll light the end of that, the spark goes down, hits the potassium nitrate with the sugar, and then you're off. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how to make a smoke bomb.